welcome to the Forgotten Trimester YouTube channel where we talk about all things postpartum and motherhood. In this episode, we are talking about the six common urinary experiences after birth. So you're gonna learn about six topics um, of how things change with how you urinate um, after birth that can be considered normal, when to worry about abnormal. Um, I am Dr. Megan Gray. I am a board certified OBGYN, still practicing, and a mother of two littles, an educator, an author, um, and I am also the founder of The Forgotten Trimester. So welcome. Um, so I wanted to kind of go over six common urinary experiences that people will have after they have birth. And these can be experienced whether you have a vaginal delivery or a cesarean section. And I will kind of highlight that as we go through each one. So number one is burning with urina urination. So when you go to urinate and you start the urine stream, a lot of people will feel burning as the urine is coming out the urethra. The urethra is the little tube that carries urine from the bladder out. So if you consider my little water balloon, here is your bladder, and this area right here is your urethra. So it carries the urine out um, and, and comes out your body. So when you're feeling that burning along the urethra, it could be a several reasons. One, it could be that if you had a Foley catheter placed during labor or for your C-section, sometimes that can be very irritating to the inner lining of the urethra. And so it will irritate and cause a little bit of inflammation so that urine as it comes out can make that burn. That will go away pretty quickly, probably within 24 hours. Um, if you had any kind of um, damage to the outside of the urethra um, during your labor process, so you had a tear along the urethra, um, as the urine comes out, it hits that little tear and can cause some burning. Another way, um, time when the um, urine causes burning is when it hits the skin. So you're starting your urine swing, stream, it comes out and it actually starts hitting the skin and then you start feeling the burning, ouch. Um, and that's commonly because in vaginal births, even if you didn't have any large tears, you can have some micro abrasions. So think of that as like um, when you are running and you fall and skid your knee on the concrete. You have those little abrasions. This isn't you don't have it. You don't need stitches for it or anything, and it, it stops bleeding pretty immediately. Um, but it's still um, the skin is still slightly damaged. Same thing with the vagina. It's slightly damaged when that urine is very basic. It hits the skin. It can cause some significant burning. Um, so great way to help with that is take that peri bottle, that little bottle that they give usually at um, the hospital, but if they don't give you one, please invest in one. It will be a lifesaver. Um, it looks like an empty shampoo bottle. Um, you can get fancy ones too on Amazon um, that uh, are even more even better than just an empty shampoo bottle. But just fill it with some lukewarm water and as you start to urinate, um, spray as you're urinating, it will dilute that urine and won't be quite as painful when it touches the skin. If you're noticing burning before you even start your urinary stream, so you're burning and it's up inside your belly, that's actually the bladder. And so that could be that you're having bladder spasms, which should go away. Um, bladder spasms can occur for, for two reasons, well, two different reasons depending on um, how you delivered. So if you had a vaginal delivery, um, the baby, so this is your bladder, the baby is um, coming out. So in, in your body, the bladder, I'm going to orient it this way because this is the urethra. This is out your bladder. Um, this is your pelvis. So your bladder kind of sits on top of the uterus. So the red balloon is your uterus. The blue balloon is your bladder. So pretend your baby is here in the uterus. As the baby is coming out, it's kind of pushing up on this bladder and the bladder, you know, is made to move and, and um, um, it's like a water balloon. So it, if it's empty, it will move and, um, but the baby can rub against the bladder and then also rub against the urethra as the head comes out. And that is, um, can be irritating to the bladder and can cause the bladder to spasm. Same thing 
with a cesarean section. When we go to um, deliver the baby, so once again, orientation, so this is inside your pelvis, the bladder sits on top of the uterus. We actually have to go in between the uterus and the bladder right here to get access to the baby. So we kind of push the bladder forward a little bit towards your pubic bone. And then that gives us more access to the, the, the lower aspect of the uterus. That's where we make our incision and that's how we deliver the baby. So um, our hands are up against that bladder, rubbing on the bladder as we're pulling the baby out. And that can be same thing, very irritating to the bladder um, muscle and cause the bladder muscle to just not work as well and cause spasming. That spasming could, can be very irritating and cause burning. But another reason why you could have burning um, in the bladder right before you start urinating is a urinary tract infection, so a bladder infection. So it's important that you, if you're having those symptoms to just check in with your physician or your midwife, let them know what your symptoms are um, so they can help delineate what is going on. Um, don't ignore these symptoms, um, especially if they're persistent. So if you're noticing they're not getting any better within 12 to 24 hours, please, please, please reach out to your physician or your midwife. Number two, another um, experience, common experience with um, the urinary symptoms after birth. Um, difficulty to pass urine, right? So pretty scary. Um, you go to pee and you can't. Um, after a vaginal birth, same thing we just talked about, that head is coming down against the bladder and it can cause, especially if it's a big baby or you're pushing for a long period of time, that head and body are sitting up against the bladder for long periods of time, rubbing and, and pushing, can be very, very irritating to um, the bladder and cause the bladder to spasm and just not the muscle not to contract as well as it should, which leads to difficulty passing urine. Um, another thing is uh, trauma to the vaginal tissue with a vaginal birth. Um, you can get tons of swelling around the urethra, um, around the labia, um, and so it can make it difficult to actually get the urine out. And the bladder might contract okay, but it's difficult to pass urine through the urethra because it's sw so swollen or the tissue around it is so swollen. Um, and as somebody that's had a cesarean section, same thing with the whole idea of irritating the bladder, like we talked about with the burning sensation. Um, when we go to deliver the baby, we're rubbing against that, the bladder with our hands, um, pushing on the bladder, that can cause irritation like we just talked about, which can make the bladder not wanna contract down like it should when it's time to pass urine. Anesthesia, different anesthesia medications can also affect how well the bladder functions. Um, if you are having difficulty passing urine, please reach out to your physician, your midwife, or your postpartum nurse. They need to know about that. Um, you don't want to go many hours without being able to pass urine um, for a variety of reasons. Obviously, it can be bad for your bladder, but also it can, as the bladder fills up, it can prevent the uterus from staying contracted down, and then that leads to heavy vaginal bleeding from the uterus um, after birth. So if you are having difficulty passing urine, please, please, please talk to your physician, your midwife, your nurse, so that they can further evaluate things. It needs to be evaluated. Number three, um, losing urine on the way to the bathroom. So I feel the urge to go, but I peed all the way, all the way there. I peed on the floor all the way there. Couldn't make it. So obviously one reason for that to happen is you can't move quick enough. Um, because you are in pain. So C-section, folks that have had C-sections, um, they can't move as fast. So they get that urge to go and they can't get there quite fast enough. Um, or vaginal delivery, same thing. I mean, just because you had a vaginal delivery does not mean it was not, it's not painful afterwards. So women cannot a lot of times move quite as fast to the bathroom. Um, number two, your um, bladder may fill and contract sooner than it had during pregnancy or prior to pregnancy. So you're used to getting that urge and then having some time to get to the bathroom. Um, but the uterus or the bladder might actually contract sooner than um, you're used to and you don't get to the bathroom fast enough. 
So those can all be very normal and it should improve over time as your body kind of resets itself. The bladder irritation um, resolves from either the vaginal birth or the cesarean section. Um, if you're noticing over the course of 24, 36, 48 hours that you're still like can't get to the bathroom fast enough, just let your physician or your midwife know. So they have that on their radar and they can um, follow that and track that with you um, because obviously it's not normal as you get further and further away from delivery. Um, number four, losing urine without feeling the urge to go. So I'm sitting in bed and all of a sudden I'm in a puddle of urine. I had no idea that I had to go. Um, so sometimes our bladders, um, because of all the irritation and inflammation during the birthing process, whether it was vaginal ovary or C-section, um, don't, you don't get the sensation and it fills and fills and fills. And then you get this one huge um, bladder contraction and you lose urine. Um, so that is not uncommon either, um, but it should not last for a long period of time. So maybe once or twice it happens um, and then it should completely resolve. So you should not be experiencing something like that beyond about 24 to 36 hours after birth. If you are, let your doctor or your midwife know. Don't be embarrassed um, if this happens to you. Nurses are very used to dealing with this. Um, and like I said, it should improve. It's usually just the, the dyssynchrony of the bladder contractions and your um, the sensation that you're supposed to feel with a full bladder. Um, number five, um, blood in the urine. So inevitably you will, when you go to the bathroom for the first time, see blood in your urine. And the reality is usually nine times out of 10, probably 9.9 .9 times out of 10, um, the blood is not actually in your urine. It's blood from the vagina. So when you sit down to pee, um, the blood that has collected in the vagina from the uterus. So the uterus is going to bleed, whether you've had a vaginal delivery or a cesarean section. And while you're sitting in bed, it will collect in the vagina. You get up to go to the bathroom, you release your urine, and then you also, the, the blood that is sitting in the vagina will leak out. It will mix with that urine on the way out and make the urine look bloody. Usually, the urine is not actually what is bloody and it's just the blood from the vagina mixing with the urine on the way out and it fills the toilet looking like bloody urine. It should not be straight blood. So if you're noticing straight blood and really you don't see any yellow or clear fluid, um, that should be evaluated. If after your vaginal bleeding is, um, improving so you're having less and less vaginal bleeding and you're still noticing like a ton of what looks like blood in the urine let your doctor or your midwife know um, you shouldn't have blood frank blood in the urine it should not your urine shouldn't be bloody it should look like diluted blood mixed with urine um, so if you have questions about that or concerns check with your doctor or your midwife okay so they can further evaluate and then finally, leaking urine when you cough, lap, sneeze. Okay, so this is a huge one because um, you know you hear you hear women talk about this until they forever in their 80s. They're talking about I have to cross my legs when I cough, lap, or sneeze. Otherwise, I've got a puddle in my pants. So um, funny, not funny. Um, it is very common for that to happen for this first couple weeks after birth, okay? So remember, your um, this is your bladder, this is the urethra. You have muscles and tissue that, that sit underneath the urethra that kind of support it and hold it up. When these muscles and tissue are damaged, it allows the urethra to kind of come, become like a little pipe. And the little um, sphincter, the little muscle, the urethral sphincter in between the bladder and the urethra that sits right here, um, is is affected by this and is no longer strong as strong as it used to be so it allows urine to leak out especially when you cough loud and sneeze because it affects how the muscles um, and tissue un that support the urethra move and so it's very common 
to have some leaking after your cough, laugh, sneeze, especially in the first couple weeks after birth. That should not last forever. And if it is, if you get to six to eight weeks after your birth and you are still having a ton of cough, laugh, uh, leaking with cough, laugh, sneeze, you need to be evaluated. Do not ignore this. You should not um, suffer in silence with this, okay? it's. Um, I know this is like, in society, it's like this rite of passage of being a woman and aging is that we cough, when we cough, laugh, and sneeze, we lose urine. But in reality, it shouldn't happen, and there are there are treatments for it. And so we should never suffer in silence about this. Um, it's not something to be embarrassed about. It happens, and there are non-medical and medical and surgical treatments for all for this and it needs to be evaluated um, and and looked into so that you're not suffering um, but just realize that the first couple weeks that is normal um, a majority of the time it will improve on its own um, but a lot of times a lot of times not even sometimes a lot of times it requires further management so um, reach out to your physician or your midwife if you're experiencing the the, the leaking with cough lab and sneeze beyond about six to eight weeks postpartum all right guys that um, wraps it up for the six common urinary experiences after birth. Um, if you like the information you're hearing, please, please, please tell your friends, subscribe, um, send me some messages, ask me some questions. I love, love, love teaching and I love um, answering questions. Um, I hope this information is helpful for you and please follow along. Um, check out my Instagram account if you are not already um, following me on IG. It is just Forgotten Trimester. Um, and check out my website, www.forgottentrimester.com. You can um, subscribe to my email list and you will get emails about new information coming out on a weekly basis, um, tips, tricks, and some supportive, um, some supportive mantras on a regular basis. So um, have a great day and I will see you here soon. Bye.